Couple of weeks ago, we talked about elements of achieving happiness in one's life. How to engender or bring about happiness as a Muslim. And I mentioned about seven or eight elements uh, to achieve happiness from the Sunnah Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which also corresponds to the uh, modern psychological and scientific fi uh, findings. And I mentioned that these all correlate to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he brought about happiness in his uh, in his life. Although he did not possess many material uh, possessions, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but he was the most happiest of the human uh, human beings as reported by the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, today, today inshallah I want to just highlight some of the obstacles to achieving happiness. Why people are not happy? What are the obstacles that prevents people from achieving happiness? And the first and foremost obstacle is obviously demarcating oneself or separating oneself from the deen on the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know there are various verses in the Quran and the sunnah, uh, the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which alludes uh, to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, as I mentioned previously, man a'rada an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatan dhanka. That whoever turns away from my remembrance, whoever turns away from my deen and the uh, and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ He will have a constrained life. He will, he will have a restricted, difficult life. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَمْأَنْ And the verses talk about what will happen to that person when he is um, uh, raised on the Day of Judgment. So keeping away from faith and keeping away from practicing Islam brings about is an obstacle to achieving happiness and the second one of the most important obstacle or the dangerous obstacles of achieving happiness is hasad jealousy and envy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he ends the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah you know qul a'udhu bil falaq he mentions it's the ending of the quran he mentions you know that you know i seek refuge he's ordering us he's ordering the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to re seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the one who envies the one who envies and what what happens when a person en envies another person psychologically that person psychologically he or she wants the blessing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided a particular individual to be removed from that person to desire what other people want uh, have to desire or aspire to what other people have in this dunya whether it be knowledge whether it be time whether it be wealth or money wives and so on and so forth this is not necessarily inherently bad we should always want good for ourselves and good for other people لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. As the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, it's part of our iman. We should not want or desire for ourselves and for other people a bad life, a restricted life. We should want a want a good life, which is based on Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. But when it when a person takes that feeling to the next step when he or she wants the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that particular person that person has given wealth or has given knowledge or has given any kind of blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides a human being that person wants to strip or take away he's, he's yearning making dua and he is earnestly working 
towards that person's blessing to be removed from that person's life. This is haram. This becomes this this becomes envy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and jealousy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in various parts of the Quran, do they envy? Do they envy? Do, do people envy other people because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them? The favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, uh, gives us, the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, it's not because of our own handiwork. It's not because of human favors. It's because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favoring the human being. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon the human beings these blessings. So when a person envies another person and is jealous of, of another, another person because of certain blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, he is actually indirectly really challenging the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Challenging predestination. And we know everything that happens and everything that takes place in this world, in this universe, is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The amount of wealth that we will earn in our lifetime is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way we created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. The way we look, some people are jealous or envious because of how a person looks like. All these things is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we desire when we are envious, when we are jealous of another, another human being because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, we are actually saying, we are not being pleased with the predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how much a person envies another person, he or she cannot take away the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. What, the, what that will do psychologically, the and the person who envies, psychologically they will become depressed. Psychologically they will not focus on their own development. They will not focus on their own spirituality. They will not focus on their own growth. But they will focus on other people. What other people look like, what other people have of money and wealth and power and prestige and status in society. So psychologically they become despondent. Psychologically they become um, uh, depressed. Right? And this is something prohibited in Islam, right? We say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. We say all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all uh, instances. The second obstacle to happiness, the second obstacle to happiness is greed, avarice, always wanting more and more and more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And whoever is rescued, whoever is saved from his own avarice, from his own covetousness, wanting more and more and more in this dunya, he will be or she will be among those who are the successful ones in this dunya. So being greedy, being covetousness, being covetous, in this, in this dunya makes us, you know, um, unhappy, makes us sad because we always want more. If the son of Adam has a mountain weight of gold, he would always want another one, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama said in an authentic hadith. So he's not satisfied. He's not happy what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that person. He's not satisfied what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that person of money and wealth and beauty and so on and so forth. Right, he's always dissatisfied. He always wants more and more. So greed is one of the obstacles of or to achieving uh, happiness. Number, uh, number three, the obstacle to achieving uh, happiness is boredom. People complain that they become bored quickly. Even particular youth, they say, ah, we, we're bored of this. I get bored quickly. When we become bored of a certain particular thing, the scholars mentioned that, in psychologists they mentioned, if you do something in a particular way, you change, change that. If you eat, for example, a dish, if you eat, you know, chicken curry and roti every single day, twice a day, after a few months or years, you'll get bored. Isn't that right? right? If you eat chips and burgers every single day, sooner or later, you will get bored. Right? So, you know, change your diet, change your actions. 
if you do certain things seven days a week, right? Nine to nine to five, five you know, change change that routine. Change that routine, and that will enrich your life. That will enrich your um, family 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 life as well. So that achieving happiness is not about doing everything um, the same every single day. Be, di uh, be different. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he entertained himself, meaning with his fa with his family members, right? They had you know he and his wife they raced outside in the on the streets of Medina. He, the Prophet Muhammad sallam wrestled in the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he done things differently because we, as part of the human psyche, part of the human creation is that we cannot always read the Quran if a person can do that that's fine we cannot always be engaged in zikr 24 7 every single minute human being is a composite of many different factors we need to entertain ourselves we need to do certain things differently so boredom is another obstacle to achieving uh, achieving uh, happiness and the next obstacle to achieving happiness is feeling that a person is being wronged a feeling of repression and suppression that a person feels that you know everyone else every everyone in the society is out to get to get get me everyone else everyone in the society is out to get me although there are people who want to you know suppress people there are people who do injustices there are people who wrong wrong other people but there are certain types of people right they have this uh, you know a bad opinion of others all the time without any due without any right without any reason without any cause cause and this is a psychological problem really it's a mental and psychological problem they be, they have this you know conspiracy theory that everyone and everything is out to uh, get there and what if we have this in our mind if we have this in our uh, disposition and in, in, in our psyche, then we will not achieve happiness. We will not develop ourselves. We, we will not, you know, develop our spirituality, our our men, me, mental capacity, and our also physical capacity. So we have to, you know, think good of people and avoid those people who do want to harm us, who do want to plot and plan against us, who do wrong us. But it doesn't mean that everyone, every single human being in this world, every single Muslim, every single non-Muslim, every, everyone is out to get, get us. That's not the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi, uh, alayhi wa sallam. And, what, and, and one of the ways of tackling, tackling that is working on your own self. Increase your, increase your knowledge. Increase your spirituality. Increase your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Increase your, you know, mu'amalat or behave, behavior and conduct in a, in a good way with, uh, with people. Be with good companions. Have good companionship. Be with people who will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not people who want to suppress you. Not people who want to put you down. Put you down. Not people who are jealous. Not people who are envious. Not people who, who work day in, day out. To suppress you, no. Be with people who who love Allah and love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sincerely and honestly, and they love the human beings and they love their Muslims. If you have those people in your life, then they know oh, they will always encourage. You. Even if you make a mistake, if you even if you fall, even if you slip, they will hold your hands and they will bring you up again. They will not suppress you. They will not put you down further and further in the pit, uh, in the bottom of the, of, the, of the pit. So be with good companion. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always used to encourage people. He always used to encourage, even when, when a companion died, or when a, a parent of a companion died, and he became distraught, became very upset, and he said, you know, he wanted to counsel that companion. And he said, you know, yes, your companion has, ha, has died, but you have to be patient. Your parents have died, but you, ha you have to be patient. Look at, you know, you have to be patient in the first moment when that happens. And he consoled the companion by saying that, look at wh where my parents are. I don't want to go into the details of, 
this hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but he wanted to counsel and console this particular compa uh, companion. So it, all these obstacles that is in front, uh, front of us, we should try and avoid. Because happiness, we, as I mentioned, we all want. Happiness is not gained through what? You know, prescription uh, uh, tablets. It's not gained through these kind of things. It's gained through what? Serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And psychologists and experts, they've said that those people who serve others in the community, those people who are servants of Allah and serve others in the community, who are of benefit to the community, they are the most happiest. They don't, they're not only looking after themselves, they're looking after themselves, but they're also giving back to the community. They're always giving back to the other human beings. So they, they, they are social people, that they get involved in social projects. And that makes them happy and that keeps them happy. So happiness is not by having, to, uh, you know, uh, imbibing or consuming or, you know, uh, doc doctors prescribing uh, tablets. And in Europe, brothers and sisters, and in America, right, the highest pres prescription tablets that the human beings have are antidepressants. Antidepressants. This is the highest you know, medicine that people have. Why? Because people are, although people are materialistically, right, with money and wealth, they have everything. Right? Compare, look at, compare the people in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Middle East, you know, all these, uh, Africa, right, all these third world countries that many perhaps are here or originate from, right? Many of the, many of the uh, inhabitants, population of, the, of those countries are more happy than the people in the Western countries. Why? Because they value things more. They value life more. They're not dependent on material possessions. They're dependent on their faith and what they have, their family and their, and their, and their surroundings. And yet we have to really ask us, this is a deeper question that we have to ask us, why are the Western, Westerners unhappy? They find that they've done reports of the different country. I'll give you one example. The clothes that we wear, the clothes that many people wear, the Versace and the Armani and their necks and their gap and all the different clothing. You have to ask, ask yourselves, we have to ask ourselves, and everyone needs to do that. Where are these clothes made from? And what condition are these clothes and the food that we consume, the fruits that we consume? Is that all, these, all these things contribute to our happiness or lack thereof or therein. So we have to ask ourselves the food that we consume. In what context? What, what context were these food you know, put in the containers? Who are the workers, employees? Are they, are they being treated well? In certain countries, the gap or the necks or the armani or, the, or these trousers and the jeans that many of our youth and elders, they want to wear. They spend hundreds of pounds or thousands of pounds to, uh, you know, uh, to wear these clothes. You, they're made in the Indian subcontinent. They're made in Africa. And they say that for every, for every American or European perhaps, for every American who buys this kind of clothes, there are about 50 or 59 slave employees, slave workers in the Indian subcontinent and in Africa. Can you imagine this? And we are wearing these kind of clothes while there are people who are working as slaves, modern day slaves, in these kind of parts of, uh, parts of the world. Right? They, they receive maybe a penny a day, if they're lucky. Penny a day. Right? 40 or 100 pounds over a year is nothing. This slave labor. Uh, uh, labor. And we have to ask ourselves also the food that we consume. The chicken, the meat, the fruits, the rice, all the different things. In what, what context? Who, where are they, where are we buying this food from? What context were they, you know, put in containers? Or delivered to our, you know, Sainsbury's and Asda's and to our, to our houses and our, to our homes? All these things, brothers and sisters, cont and contribute to our lack of happiness or happy happiness. And this is why we have to really go back to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and be ethical people. Right? Be ethical, ethical people. If, if, if there is a country who is bombarding 
If there is a country who is bombarding another country and, that, and people as a whole supporting the products of that country, that will also is an obstacle to our happiness. So all these things we have to really ponder over, we have to, we, we, we have to contemplate. Some of the scholars, you know, Imam al nawi for example, this shows, you know, scrupulousness from these scholars. He would not drink from a well, and this is an Islamic state. This is when the, you know, Islam was dominant. This is an Islamic state where the ruler was Muslim, where they were implementing Sharia and so on and so forth. He would not drink, and many others, from a well, water I mean, he would not drink from a well where the Muslim ruler was doing injustices against his population or from a t in, in, in particular town. Because he did not want to contaminate himself with that wrongdoing. If you drank, if we drink from that well, it's not, it's not haram. It's not haram, but look at the way the previous scholars and previous Muslims, where they used to think. Now we don't care where our water is from, where our food is from, where our clothing is from. And we ask, we say, you know, where are we unhappy? So the highest prescribed tablets of medicine in Europe, in, West, in the Western countries, and I, one of the highest is antidepressants. And what is antidepressants? That paracetamol. Paracetamol, and for our Asians, for everything that we have to have paracetamol. <laughs> for a headache, we've got a flu, we've got a fever, right? We have to have paracetamol. That's, that's not the way to do, the way to go about. Pra what does paracetamol do? It does not cure the actual problem. It suppresses the problem, right? It does not actually cure the, cure the problem. You have one paracetamol, two paracetamol, after a few hours, it, the pain comes back again. Most of the, uh, most of the time. This, this, this is antidepressants. Uh, someone gave an example of the antidepressants. Why people have this in society? That a man he went to he went with his car to the garage, and he said to the engineer, "There's some there's some problem in, with my car. It, it makes it makes a, a rattling noise when I drive. It makes a rattling noise. And can you fix this? It's, it's annoying." So the engineer looked at it for a few days. The garage they looked at it for a few days. He could not find the problem, and the rattling noise is still there. So what he told the man when he came back, he said, look, I've looked at it, and I've found a solution for you. When you drive, right, and when you hear the rattling noise, turn on your radio and increase the volume so you don't hear the rattling noise. <laughs> right? This is antidepressants. This is, this is paracetamol, right? It doesn't cure the problem, right? You're just, you know, camouflaging it. You're just putting another clothing or clothing on, on, on top, of, top of it. True happiness is attained by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice or to preach. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability for the son of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.